Morning, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Friday night, January 16, 2026. Here's the date, 929 p.m. local time here in California. The latest activity here shows a, uh, let's see what we got tonight. Looks like a 1.0 across the area of uh, California. Going to bring this timestamp down just a little bit because now, you know, we're, we're past that 24-hour threshold there for the 6.0 earthquake that stirred off stirred up out here in the Blanco fracture zone last night. There's one aftershock there so far of a 3.1. And of course, uh, earthquake activity and slow slip events should be increasing down here, right? Across Northern California. Well, we've seen a slight increase in smaller magnitude earthquakes. Also, the slow slip events have increased down here across Northern California as expected. Nothing major. Uh, but definitely something of an uptick here because it wasn't like this in the last few days. So we know that the earthquake activity that's occurring off along the Blanco fracture zone is directly affecting the stress and strain out here across the southern portion there of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Now that's a decent amount of uptick tonight, not only down south, but uh, mainly up north here. Look at that, 404 epicenters of slow slip events there underneath the Vancouver Island range. Now that's the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, but uh, looking at this model here shows, you know, the entirety here of the Cascadia subduction zone showing some major uptick in the last 24 hours. That is slow slip events occurring down underneath the area deeper into the subduction zone, of course, which adds further stress and strain potential up along the locked area of the Cascadia. So we'll continue to watch out there, folks. Uh, nothing major going on across the Washington area. Same for Oregon. Northern California, as I mentioned there, slight increase there for uh, earthquakes across Northern California. Uh, the Bay Area, fairly quiet tonight. Not a whole lot going on there for earthquake activity. Uh, down across Southern California here, let's see what we got. One earthquake, uh, well, there's been a couple here. Uh, far as 2.5 and above, it looks like all of them are literally underneath one another here. This is near Avenal, which is, uh, well, it's east here of the Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault. And it's literally, man, it's literally just due east here where strain would transfer off of when we got maximum pressurization out there across the, the uh, plate boundary. Now, remember the Parkfield section, I talk about this a lot because it, it does see regular intervals of a 6.0 or larger every 20 to 22 years. And our last one was back in 2004. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see some signs out there of stress transferring off that area. Got a little swarm out there of uh, earthquakes above the 2.5 range. Southern California, a little light in terms of earthquake potential. Uh, there's that swarm, though, that was stirring up around the uh, El Centro area underneath Anza. Um, there's, yeah, there's Anza. I wonder if my Anza station's working. It's offline here again. A lot of the plate boundary stations are offline, but we'll continue to reset those and uh, adjust as needed. Uh, so in the last seven days here, we're coming up on 74 earthquakes here across the Imperial Fault down there across Southern California. That could potentially be coming up here for... A larger magnitude. Uh, we talked about this a lot in the uh, morning update. So we'll continue to watch that area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Only, uh, what do we got? Only three earthquakes out there. I don't really see anything major. No fear mongering going on there. But we will double check the, uh, the seismograph station. See what we got here for the recorded view. Uh, Yellowstone's one of those areas, you know, you can you can definitely fear monger. And, uh, well, I don't do that, but a lot of people do. But you got to have earthquake activity to fear monger, right? And right now there's not a whole lot. There was a couple earthquakes out here earlier this morning. Uh, nothing, well, this is this afternoon, early evening, I should say. A couple earthquakes this morning. But as you can see, there's a handful of earthquakes around Yellowstone. Uh, nothing big. That one's offline because you can tell that it's not picking up anything, meaning that it's it's not registering anything at all. Uh, so at least we got one station there that's able to monitor the activity. Uh, but there's not a whole lot going on there across Yellowstone for now. Hopefully they get those seismograph stations up and running as they should be. 
uh, year round. But you know, I, I get it. The weather, the elements can have an effect there in getting to those stations and working on them. Oil fields there, western Texas, still rocking and rolling. The eastern portion of the country, well, it's pretty quiet out there for now. Take a look at the world view of things and uh, where the uh, most recent activity is stirring up. Uh, let's see. Looks like back over here across the Japan area once again. The Kuril Cam Chatka Trench all the way down through Japan. The Izu Trench. Even earthquake activity picking up around Taiwan. So this area under watch here for some larger earthquake activity. As it has been here in the last several months. You know, we've seen that mega quake up here along the Kuril Cam Chatka last July. Back in uh, 2025. But there's mega potential out here along the southern end of the Kuril Cam Chatka down across the Nankai Trough and this other area down south. Do you have to watch that closely because we got uh, a lot of movement happening here recently. Uh, 3.1 south here of the Philippines. Uh, New Zealand, uh, nothing going on there for now. Looks pretty quiet. 5.2 up along the Kermadec Trench. And uh, Hawaii, let's go ahead and check out Hawaii because it's been a little area of interest here recently with its unusual earthquake swarming that's stirring up underneath the Kilauea volcano. In fact, they, uh, the USGS put out a, another notification here about the fourth seismic swarm that began beneath the southeast side of Hill, uh, the uh, crater there, Kilauea volcano. That was earlier... Uh, well, that was last night. Earthquake activity right now. Let's go ahead and see. Here. Let's go back here to the USGS map. See what we got across Kilauea Volcano. Looks like that is still ongoing this afternoon here, early evening. Quite a few ones showing up. So let's take a look here real quick. See what we got. There's those earthquakes earlier this evening showing up. It does look like things have kind of calmed down since then, but it's been it's been elevated out here. And there's a little uncertainty on to what's going to take place here, whether we see, uh, you know, stress and whatnot create a blockage down below, which could alter the magma flow from the summit area of the crater area off somewhere else. I mean, it's very possible. Not going to see the eruption out here in the rinse and repeat stage, you know, all you know for forever it's going to eventually change uh, we are waiting on episode 41 coming up for Kilauea volcano uh, i'm going to take a look here at the deformation data see what we got this evening still on track here we're going up notice a couple uh bumps there on the graphs that happened during the swarming period so there is stuff altering the um the level of inflation not much longer here. This was kind of a, uh, it was a short-lived eruption. And the volume that was depleted was not that much compared to the last several eruptions there. So we'll see a return to an eruption, uh, oh, in a number of days or so, pending uh, we don't get some blockage going on down below that uh, diverts that magma somewhere else. Uh, let's see what else we got around the globe here. Mediterranean region. Getting uh, some activity out there off the coast of Turkey. Nothing big going on. Um, but man, it's definitely filling in out here across the northwestern edge of the Pacific Plate. And this Filipino Plate here. Definitely getting the crunch going on right now. So we do, we do got to watch that for sure. Uh, space weather activity. Let's take a look here and see what we got. Wow, look at the speed jumping up there above 700. Uh, not much for the Aurora activity. So let's see why. It looks like the BTBZ component there is tight. Way up in the positive territory. Notice those run times there. I'll, I'll kind of click on this so you guys can see it maybe a little bit better here. Uh, is this recent? 117.0? Yeah, it is. Um... It's really not wide open as it could be, which would amplify the auroras out there. Uh, it's fairly, like I say, close-knit here, very tight together, which suppresses the auroras. So um, unless this opens up and allows things to amplify here, uh, we may not see much tonight. 
the speed has definitely jumped up there. You know, that's way up in the red, 721 kms a second. That's pretty significant. Even some density being stirred up there. Uh, so should that open up and it, it, it fluctuates, it can fluctuate. Um, unless it opens up there, it would probably be suppressed as far as the auroras go because there's not a whole lot happening there. But expect that here over the next couple nights as we get the high-speed solar wind stream from this coronal hole that's been facing us here for a number of days. And that's a fairly massive area, a uh, pretty huge area down south here of the sun. Uh, you know, it, it could be why we're seeing some elevated earthquake activity. Who knows? Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. As far as flaring activity goes, the coronal holes don't produce flares. Uh, I had to mention that because someone said something about coronal holes. Yeah, watch for the flaring activity coming from coronal holes. And I'm thinking, yeah, no, that's not right. Sunspots here produce the coronal, uh, the uh, <laughs> produces the flaring out activity out here. Um, solar flares and uh, this one here is growing remember this was just a little bitty baby a couple days ago now this is looking uh, fairly complex got some structure to it growing in size not a lot not too often do we see the sunspots just pop out of the blue like that and hold steady uh, but that one's looking pretty good this area back here um, still holding in there it's a fairly massive area it does have some complexity uh, the rest of the areas I'm really not too concerned with, but the flare threat, fairly elevated, 55% chance there for M flare, X flare around 10% chance or so. So watch that as, as those uh, sunspots there continue to rotate into a more Earth-directed view. Uh, Taking a look here at the Climate Prediction Center for long-range models here. We do have a little change coming here to Northern California. I hope that rings true there. Uh, the 6 to 14, uh, the six to 10-day forecast, not good for the West Coast. But looking down the road here, uh, hopefully Northern California gets back in on the action as far as rainfall goes because, man, it's, it's already drying up out there. And that's not good here for uh, Northern California. Um... Uh, just a dominant, massive high-pressure system out there. Let's take a look at that and see what's going on. See what the culprit is. There it is. It's sitting up into Alaska, bringing the storm track way up north and then way down south here, bringing all that cold air in across the uh, eastern portion of the country. And until that moves, man, until, oh, man, that's not good. It looks like it reinforces back across the west coast here. It just wants to sit there and make life miserable for me. <laughs> Not even joking. I like the sunshine, um, but also at the same time, we do need the rain. We're not just supposed to pick up 10 inches of rain and call it good. You know, we should be 22 inches of rain here around the Chico area, some a little bit more uh, on average for our rainy season, which is right now. And it hit 78 degrees here uh, outside of Chico where I live. Uh, today it was nice went out there set in the sun chomper out there just enjoying the sunshine as well he's definitely a a sun lover he does not like the rain or the wind or the cold so he was out there just hanging out with me and uh i, I hope the rain returns out here right now it's not looking good oh uh, man but hopefully things change all right um have yourself a wonderful rest of the friday night here uh, we do have the member drawing coming up. I, I haven't really been mentioning it a lot because I've been, you know, off track and whatnot here, dealing with personal issues with Chomper and whatnot. Uh, but the member drawing is coming up here. We normally do it uh, around the 20, 20 to the 22nd here of each month. It's something we do every single month. We've been doing it here for about four years now where we just kind of uh, give back to the members here that support uh, this channel. We do uh, uh, give away uh, some prizes there to the members. And uh, I don't know what our member count is at here. Uh, let me check here real quick and see what we got. I'm going to put you guys back over there on the live stream. But I, give me a second here and I'll check our member count see what we got. If we're above a certain level, I normally like to try and pick three or so. Uh, okay, let me bring this back here. Um, we are at, uh, 
We're at 182. So normally, if it's above 200 or so, we'll uh, we'll pick out three winners. So we're a little low. We've dropped down into the two category here. We're picking out two winners. Um, so if we can get that back up there above 200, we'll pick out three winners uh, come the drawing on the 20th. Somewhere around the 20th to, to the 22nd. So uh, you can always gift memberships. That's always an option. Or if you know friends or family that watch the channel, you can also um, invite them to become a member here. So we got uh, 182. That's down a little bit there from, I think we had over 200 and something. If I recall for our last drawing, I think it was like 207. So we lost a few, but a lot of those were gifted memberships and a lot of people choose not to rejoin as a member. Um, but if you feel like gifting some memberships out here, go for it. See if that pushes us over 200 uh, so we can give uh, three lucky people there some prizes coming up here uh, in a couple days. So it's getting close. All right, have yourself a good one. I am out of here, ready for bed. I'm feeling a little bit better. Chomper's still doing good. Latest update on Chomper is he's he's uh, hanging in there, eating, drinking, using the bathroom. He still has some blockage. Right now, waiting on the potassium citrate to potentially, hopefully, break that down and allow some free flow going on. But uh, day by day, day by day is the latest update here for Chomper. So... All right, we'll see you guys out here for the Saturday morning update. Stay safe, folks. It's a crazy world right now. A lot of crazy uh, worldwide events going on here. Look at that super deep earthquake into the Izu Trench. You guys see that one? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Is that a 4.5? Yeah, that was almost 500 kilometers de deep here. That's going to be this earthquake. 301 miles deep there for a 4.5. And then a couple hours later, we got the stress and strain showing upstream across the locked area of the, the subduction zone. So just be on guard. Things picking up. Got massive coronal hole activity facing us. Things could be uh, getting rather interesting here in the coming days. We'll see you guys out here for the Saturday morning update. Have a wonderful evening, folks. Take care.